Here's it in standard form. Oh, actually, you know what, let's, uh, let's make this negative. That's a good idea. Make it negative. That's fine, we haven't done a negative yet. So we have a negative. Now automatically, I already know from standard form, this is negative, that means the graph is now going to be opening down. I already know my vertex is maximum, right? So that's just using my thinking skills right there for that. Uh, but this is not in vertex form. So I could use the formula if I wanted to, but we need to, we need to make sure we know how to manipulate equations from one form into the other because later on in this course, we're gonna be doing it uh, again. So we're just gonna practice step by step. Okay, now the problem with this is, is my first term a square term? Coefficient and variable. No, coef the variable is squared, coefficient is not, right? So I can't do like the bonus problem. The bonus problem, the coefficient and the variable is squared. That was good. Over here, is my negative one, is that a square term? No. Well, actually, you can't, well, negative one times negative one is positive one, and one times, so it doesn't work, right? So negative, Negative is not a square term either. So what we need to do is there's a couple things. First thing we're gonna do is get rid of this. Um, so let's group the negative three x squared plus 24 x minus one. So we got that out of there. Because you guys agree with me, it's not a perfect square term. We can't factor it into a binomial squared. The next thing is we, don't, we like the x, the x squared is good, but the negative three is not, correct? Negative three is not squared. Would you guys agree with me? So we gotta get that out as well. So y equals, so we factor out a negative three. Now, I just have a squared term. And now what I need to do is find my other squared term. So again, the process of finding that other squared term is to take b divided by two and square it. Well, b is your coefficient of your linear term, which in this case is negative eight over two squared, which is equal to negative four squared, which equals to 16. So now I have y equals negative three x squared minus eight x plus 16. And then again, guys, remember, if you're gonna add 16 on the right side, you have to add 16 to the left side, right? Or you could just subtract 16 on the same side, and you get this. Now, we created a perfect square trinomial. Just like your warm up today, you just created it. B divided by two squared creates this. Is this squared and this squared? Mm -hmm. Yes, can we now use our warm up ways and factor this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I forgot one thing, sorry about that. I kind of moved a little bit too fast. All right, here's the main trick that people get because they work too fast and they forget or they're talking to the person next to them and they're not writing this down. So, did I really add a 16 in here? Add it? Yes, no? I didn't add a 16 in here because what is happening to the 16? The 16 is actually being multiplied by a negative three. So in reality, you have to multiply, if you're gonna add 16, that really is a 16 times a negative three, so you have to subtract the 16 times negative three. If you start working too fast, you'll forget that step. I just did it and I'm teaching, right? So just be careful. Now let's go back to where we're at here. Y equals negative three. This is a perfect square trinomial. What two numbers multiply to give you 16, add to give you negative eight? X minus four squared. Negative 16 times three is going to be a positive 48 minus one is going to be 47. So my vertex is four comma 47. And that is a absolute max. It's an absolute max because the graph opens down. Okay? Don't worry guys if you're not 100%.